Hi, I'm Mike, and today we're at Manchester Central for the Education Innovation Show. Today we're here to meet Russell Prue from AndersonTiger.com who helps schools get set up and started in internet radio. So let's head inside and see what Russell's got to say. Uh, Mike, I'm Russell Prue. I'm the founder and managing director of Anderton Tiger Broadcasting. We make school radio equipment and do live show broadcasting. By accident, really. Um, I'd done a little bit of radio as a student, as most of us have done, really. Uh, a tiny bit when I was very young on Timmy Mallet's radio show on BBC Radio Oxford. I remember we used to do a Wednesday show, it was Hit or Miss, and as a local DJ, I was a mobile DJ at kind of 13 years old, going around doing school discos and stuff, and so I was invited into the studio. And I kind of liked that, and I then left it alone, a little bit as a student, a bit later on, but coming back to it as a teacher trainer, I wanted to find something that young people could just get their teeth stuck into that had some theatre, some elegance, some excitement, some motivation, some kind of deadline working. Now, young people don't get this because, you know, I'm late with my homework. What happens? Not a lot. I get a little bit of red pen. Russell, you're late. Late for a radio show? Big trouble. And there's no kind of jeopardy or risk in education. And we need to, for the children's sake, for young people's sake, we need to kind of give them that experience of risk in a managed and controlled way. Live radio does that in school. No one's going to die. It's not the end of the world. All I get is a bit of trouble in the playground if I muck it up. But I learn to be resilient. And it's those kind of resilience and coping skills that are essential for the health and well-being of our young people. Well, I think the biggest single challenge schools face are money. No one's got two pennies to rub together at the moment, and we can thank our government and our recession for a lot of that. But there are some, uh, there are some opportunities for fundraising, so I have some of my customers have raised the money themselves. Uh, in one or two schools, the children have done cake and bake sales and car boot sales and sponsored sporting activity and have raised the money themselves. So what I wanted to do was to bring the cheapest possible Possible solution with the biggest bang for your pounds anywhere in the world and I've done that so I'm the manufacturer of the cheapest school radio system in the world and for under three grand you can get a radio station now I've had to work really hard for that and not be greedy and buy my products and use some really clever manufacturing techniques but it is possible if you've got education in your heart I think the biggest single benefit young people get from running a radio station is confidence with language. We can give them a sense of an audience without giving them an audience. So the only way to get a sense of audience is to stand up in assembly. That's pretty scary. And if you're not happy with the way you look, your features, the confidence in yourself, that can be a tall order for any child at any age, and some adults as well. Whereas radio, no one cares what you look like. It's all about this performance. It's all about the vocal performance. I can really focus on that and be rewarded for good performance and have lots of people tell me I'm fabulous uh, and I need to earn that, of course, without having to see me. And I like the way we have to work together in groups as well. We're not doing enough of that in our schools. Young people need to work in groups so that we can be assessed as a group. I need to rely on on you, my cues and every coming to you in five, four, three. And I need the confidence to know to speak on zero and that you've brought the music down at the right level and when I ask you a question you just don't go because dead air is bad. So with a little bit of education, I think the benefits are about collaboration, resilience building. Now that's quite new and quite topical at the moment. Building good and characteristics in a young person so they are more resilient for the whatever life throws at them. And radio does that in bags. Well, I think students can promote their stations in a number of ways. We provide each of our customers with a plan about how they would adopt. I call it my radio adoption guide. First thing, broadcast live around the school. 
get an audience. Take your best shows up and put them on a website so they can be listened to again. At that point, you might want to then acquire a 24-hour streaming service outside of your school so that your station appears up and running 24 hours a day. After that, go live to the community. For me, that's when it gets really exciting. When parents can listen live, can text into the studio, son, enjoying the show, you're great. Oh, I've just had a text from my dad everywhere, it's amazing. You might have a debate, you might do a homework club, you might discuss sensitive issues that are hard to discuss in, to discuss in school, like health, sexual well-being, a whole range of stuff that we still find with our British values difficult to discuss in school. Really easy to do on the radio, no one's embarrassed, we can have a really good question, a really good answer on a whole range of subjects and involving the community gives us the opportunity to raise some money because I can see today's weather is sponsored by AJ Motors, your high street dealer open late on Thursdays and then go on to do the weather, the sports report, anything you want brings real money into school, engages with the parents, engages with the local community. Everyone wins with that one, really. Something you wouldn't be able to do on local radio because they wouldn't have the dedicated or the specialist interest. Of course, only parents and extended family and people who live around the school interested in what the school do. Um, I think for this year, the uh, radio station that's done the most would be Willow's Waves, also uh, a customer of yours as well. They're in Cardiff. Uh, the head of music there, Gareth Ritter, uh, set a radio station up and Educating Cardiff will be on your screens on Channel 4, an unashamed plug for that television programme. But what I do like about that series, we've had Educating Yorkshire, uh, London, Essex and of course now Cardiff in September 2015 is that radio was an important part of the school's celebration of success. They've really used it to bring kids in, raise attendance, raise awareness, teach music and teach collaborative learning really in a very exciting way. So I like the way they've, what they've done there. They broadcast regularly across the planet on your network. They've got an, a listening app for kids to listen to the phones. Children are encouraged to get their phones out in school. It's great. It all sounds really good. So I think if I had a, if I had to choose a favourite, and it's really hard, I'd say that one. Gareth's doing amazing work there with one of my stations, and of course streaming across the planet on the internet. What's not to like? Kids have got a lead on it. It's got to be simple and straightforward, but it's also got to have the theatre. What do I mean by that? Coloured bright, exciting windshields, nice kit that looks the part. When I come here as a child, I have to feel as if I'm really engaged in the radio activity. I need to feel special. I need emphasis on my work that I'm going to do here, a celebration of success. If it's just ye old £1.99 microphone from Maplins, and we love Maplins, no disrespect whatsoever, other electronic stores are available. But if we've just got the one microphone there, it doesn't give me the theatre that I need to come here. I need the on-air light, I need the mic live sign, I need jingles that I can just hit with my finger on a touch screen. But me clicking with the keyboard with Alt Space F to press the, uh, the fun jingle, that's, that's, stop, stop, you've wasted your money. It's got to be touch simple. Schools are in a unique position to differentiate their programming because they can sell advertising to local businesses who are positioned locally around the school. It's a no-brainer really uh, and they might have sponsorship from a florist, a motor mechanics. Normally these are small uh, sole traders, they aren't multinational companies. That advertising goes elsewhere to major radio corporations, independent, uh, big radio chains. You're getting to the heart of the matter, you know who I'm talking about. That money goes elsewhere. We're not interested in that, although if it does come our way, always talk to Tesco's or other supermarkets that might be interested. What you will find is the corner shop with a child that goes to your school, perfectly poised to give us some advertising. And we might just say today's weather is sponsored by AJ Motors, your Audi dealer in the high street, open late on Thursdays. It's going to be rainy with some cold periods coming to the... It just might be something as simple as that. There's good money to be earned uh, by the young people. It's like running a business. So we're giving young people entrepreneurial skills as well, selling advertising to local businesses who will pay because their child is coming to school. 
Young people uh, under 25s are listening to more internet radio now than they have ever done before, according to the RAB, people that compile the uh, uh, radio statistics for us for advertising. So we know that that's a really big growth market. For schools to get involved in that, they need to do something now, because one, you're preparing young people for participation in this market, and you're also riding the crest of a wave, I think, because you're getting this interest, you're getting young people used to listening. The biggest difference, I think, about radio and other types of media, you can always do something else whilst you're listening to the radio. You can't do anything else if you're concentrating on something visually. So if it's a TV station that the school have, uh, to do something in the evening, really hard work. To do something live five times a day, incredibly or prohibitively difficult. Whereas radio is quick, easy, cheap and very effective. And for me as an educator, hits all the educational outcomes much more easily than doing TV. I would like to see every school in the country with their own radio station and you think well that's impossible but it isn't. They all exist in communities and it's generally those communities which listen to the radio. Um, I've set a website up called schoolradiocalendar.org which is a free publishing site where schools go and say what they're broadcasting so you can look through today's broadcast live uh, radio stations. You don't have to be one of my customers to register for free. I personally fund this myself because it seems like a good thing to do. And live means live and it means now, so that listeners can interact with it. This is why live radio is so much more exciting than podcasting, because once you've done it, that's it. And for me, educationally, it's hard for the kids to let go of the podcast. I'll just go back and, I'll just go back and edit it a little more. I'll just put some more. Live is live. Can we do that again, Russell? No. It was live and it's taking kids up to that cliff edge and showing them what the look down looks like. This is what it feels like. This is the experience of life. Oh, I'm so sorry I meant to say that's an important skill for young people.